This is Plant-Based Briefing, the 411 on vitamin B12 by Dr. Michael Greger at nutritionfacts.org. And I'm Marian Erickson. This is the curated content plant-based podcast, where I narrate a variety of articles on plant-based and vegan living in about 10 minutes or less every weekday with permission. I'm thrilled to have permission to share content from nutritionfacts.org. So now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. The 411 on vitamin B12 by Dr. Michael Greger at nutritionfacts.org. Vitamin B12 is not made by plants or animals, but by microbes blanketing the earth. We presumably used to get B12 when we drank out of a mountain stream or sipped water from a well, based on studies showing vegetarians in developing countries who drink purified water appear to be at higher risk of deficiency. Now, we typically chlorinate our water supply to kill off any bacteria, so most of us don't get a lot of B12 in our water anymore. But we don't get a lot of cholera either. That's a benefit of living in a much more sanitary world. Vegetarians living in slums and lesser developed regions appear to have fewer B12 problems, though. Basically, the more hygienic our meals, the less B12 we get. Our fellow great apes, like gorillas, get all the B12 they need eating their own feces. I prefer supplements. So how much should we get? What type is best? And how can we tell if we have a B12 deficiency? The Benefits of Vitamin B12 We cannot mess around with getting vitamin B12. If we don't get enough, we may face a wide range of disorders of the gut, blood, brain, and nervous system. Many case reports detail ways B12 can be life-changing. For instance, a 47-year-old woman had a five-year history of psychosis. She had been treated with antipsychotic drugs and was cognitively impaired and reported visual hallucinations. After her mother revealed that the patient had been following a strict vegan diet for seven years, Vitamin B12 supplementation was started, and her symptoms went away. She had lost years of her life lost in the psychotic haze, apparently just because she didn't want to take a supplement. Vitamin B12 supplementation is mandatory for anyone eating plant-based diets, and as I'll discuss later, for every one of us from age 65. Vitamin B12 Deficiency, Symptoms, and Treatment Vitamin B12 deficiency can cause everything from abdominal distension and chronic diarrhea to shortness of breath and swollen, red, painful feet. It can also cause Parkinson's syndrome-like symptoms, skin darkening that resolved with supplementation, and bilateral useless hand syndrome, a condition I'd never heard of before. Being deficient in B12 may also manifest in a variety of neurological symptoms, for example, numbness and tingling in the hands and feet, muscle cramps, dizziness, cognitive disturbances, difficulty walking, and erectile dysfunction, as well as fatigue and such psychiatric symptoms as depression along with psychosis. How can B12 deficiency be treated? Either with B12 supplements or B12-fortified foods. Suggested B12 Dosage The official position of associations and governmental agencies is categorical and unequivocal. Supplementation of vitamin B12 is required for anyone on a vegetarian diet, even when consuming eggs and dairy, and I would extend that to include flexitarians eating only a few servings of meat a week. Who else should ensure they have a regular, reliable source of vitamin B12 by supplementing their diet with B12 supplements or B12-fortified foods? Those who've had bariatric surgery, which can sometimes impair absorption, those eating plant-based diets, and everyone from the age of 65. Adults younger than 65 should take at least one 2,000 microgram supplement once a week, ideally as a chewable, sublingual, or liquid supplement taken on an empty stomach, or at least one 50 microgram daily supplement. As we age, our ability to absorb vitamin B12 may decline, so for those 65 and older, the supplementation should probably be increased up to 1,000 micrograms each day. Pregnant and breastfeeding women can just follow my 50 microgram a day recommendation for non-pregnant adults or take 2,000 micrograms a week, perhaps split into two doses to boost absorption. After infants are weaned, they can start on 5 micrograms a day. From ages 4 through 10, kids can take half the adult dose of 25 micrograms a day. Then they can take 50 micrograms a day or 2,000 micrograms a week from age 11. Note that these doses are specific to cyanocobalamin, the preferred supplemental form of vitamin B12. The best food sources of vitamin B12. If you need supplemental B12, but don't want to take supplements, you must rely on B12-fortified foods, eating three separate servings of B12-fortified foods a day, each ideally containing at least 190% of the daily value on the product's nutrition facts label. B12-fortified nutritional yeast is a common food source, and there are all sorts of other B12-fortified options on the market, including plant-based meats and milks, breakfast cereals, and even energy drinks. The worst food sources of vitamin B12. 
What about various algae-type products like spirulina, which are advertised as natural vitamin B12 sources? Not only do they not naturally contain B12 that's usable for humans, they may contain B12 analogs, look-alike molecules, that can even block your absorption of real B12. Can vitamin B12 cause side effects? You don't have to worry about taking too much vitamin B12. It's water-soluble, so at worst, you'll just end up with more expensive pee. Injectable forms, though, can trigger acne. Methylcobalamin versus Cyanocobalamin There are two main types of vitamin B12. Methylcobalamin, marketed as methyl B12, and cyanocobalamin, typically marketed as just vitamin B12. Methylcobalamin is more expensive, so it must be better, right? Wrong. Cyanocobalamin is the most used form thanks to its high stability. Methylcobalamin is less stable and particularly susceptible to being destroyed after exposure to light. The one major exception may be kidney failure though. Methylcobalamin may be better for those with impaired kidney function. It's been speculated that oral methylcobalamin or injected hydroxycobalamin may also be preferable in smokers, though it has yet to be confirmed. You just listened to The 411 on Vitamin B12 by Dr. Michael Greger at nutritionfacts.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson. And this is a good reminder to check with your family members who are over 65, even if they eat animals, and make sure they are supplementing with B12. Hopefully their doctors are advising them to do so, but it wouldn't hurt just to remind them anyway. And here's a quick update. I reached out to my in-laws to let them know about B12. Are they supplementing? How much are they taking? What kind should they take, etc.? And one was taking not enough and not in a chewable or sublingual. So I gave her the information from this post and said I'd send them what we're taking. And I went to look and ours is the wrong kind. It's the methylcobalamin. So if it's less stable and possibly not working properly, we might as well get the one that is known to be more stable and more likely to work. My husband doesn't even take the extra B12 supplement. He was just taking the multivitamin we take, which says there's enough B12. But in one of the videos linked in this post, Dr. Greger mentions that he recommends taking it separately and as a chewable sublingual or liquid supplement. And he says, why can't you just get it as part of a multivitamin or something? because various vitamins and minerals mixed into the same pill can destroy active B12, forming B12 analogs, B12 lookalikes that not only can our body not use, but the analogs can be potentially harmful because they can inhibit the transport of what little B12 is left. That's why using multivitamins can be counterproductive for the supplementation of vitamin B12. And as to why chewable or sublingual, he says absorption is boosted when the B12 mixes with saliva since you secrete a B12 binding protein from your salivary glands that helps transport B12 safely through the digestive tract. You can have people chew a tablet of B12 and their B12 levels go up 10 times more than just simply swallowing the exact same pill. So I'm glad I reached out to my in-laws and I'm glad I looked to see what we're actually taking because I just assumed we were taking the right thing. So I did a quick search online and it's super easy to find a thousand daily micrograms of a sublingual B12 supplement. That's cyanocobalamin rather than the methylcobalamin. So that's the kind I'm going to get and that's the kind I've recommended to my in-laws. So please share this episode with anyone who might benefit and thanks for listening.